Oh hey, it's good to see you again. Welcome to another edition of East on Adobe. Today we're going to look at some of the tools in the InDesign toolbar. So, let's get started. As we get started in InDesign, we want to become familiar with the tool panel. You can see that I'm hovering in the tab area of the tool panel on the left side of the workspace here. If you left click and hold in that area, you can detach that and place it where you'd like it. You can also reorient this tool panel horizontally. You can make it a double column layout if you'd like by pressing these arrow keys in the tab area of the tool panel. Okay, we're going to take a quick look at some of the primary tools that you'll be using. If you mouse over a tool and pause, it's going to give you the name of the tool and it's also going to give you the keyboard shortcut to pull that tool up. It's good to get familiar with those because sometimes you don't want to move your mouse yet you need a tool. So for example the selection tool the keyboard shortcut is V or escape. The selection tool is used to move objects around your page. It's also used to resize objects. You can rotate objects and you'll notice when I get to the corner of this container it gives me what looks like a curved arrow that lets me know I'm ready to rotate. So if I just left click and hold at that point, it's going to rotate my item. You can also crop pictures with the selection tool. Select the item and simply drag the box closed around it and it will crop that picture just like you want it. Now to edit undo, I use control Z. There's another way to do it, but control Z is the fastest way and that works in nearly every Adobe Creative program and Microsoft Office program. So use Control Z, it's helpful. You can also go to File, Revert. Okay, that is the selection tool. Right next to it, we have the direct selection tool, Shortcut A. With this, we can do a little bit more fine tuning with objects, and it allows me to reshape objects, which is really nice. And you'll notice when I get to the edge of this polygon, my cursor looks like it has a tiny little line next to it. That lets me know that I'm ready to reshape it. So I can just drag at that point and I can make it a slightly different shape however I want it. And control Z to edit undo. Down here we have the line tool. And I'm going to go ahead and put a sloped line on my page because I want to show you how to type on that sloped line. And next to the line tool, we have the type tool. And you'll notice that some of these tools have little black check marks in the bottom right corner. And that lets you know that there are nested tools there. So if you left click and hold over that tool, it's going to show you all the tools that are in there. So we have our type tool, and that's the default setting. But we also have a type on a path tool. That's pretty cool. I'm going to show you how you use that here. We have, it looks like my line disappeared, so I'm going to put another one down here. I'm going to take this type on a path tool and I'm going to hover over my sloped line and you'll notice my cursor once it identifies that sloped line or a sloped object it will give me a little plus sign next to my cursor that lets me know that I'm ready to type on a slope. I can now change that text around if I want to. I can change the size of it. Here are all my editing options for text up here. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. I can change the type of font that I've got. Okay. And use my select tool to put it in place. Notice that it has been grouped. Well, it, it's really been kind of oriented to that line that I have there. So now when I move it, it stays at that same angle. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and hit Control Z and undo all of that. And let's go right down the list here. We're going to look at two more tools here. One is the rectangle tool, and one is the rectangle frame tool. And I'm going to open up another page here to look at this. I'm going to go over here. And the first thing we're going to look at is the rectangle frame tool. I'm going to select that frame tool. Come over here and draw a frame. We do have nested frame tools here also. We have the polygon and the ellipse frame tool. Okay, so I've got my frame tool, and what I can do with this is I can insert an object or a picture by going File, Place, and just choose an object. Now you notice that that doesn't exactly look right, 
So we can actually resize that picture pretty easily. If I just right click on that, you'll find a option for fitting. And if you go fit frame proportionally, it should make that picture look nice in there. Okay, so there you've got your frame tool. And next to it we have a rectangle and we have some other tools there, an ellipse and any polygon tool. So if I, I'm gonna go ahead and select a rectangle and I can just left click and draw a rectangle and you can also, if you hold shift while you have this tool, it will draw a perfect square for you. Okay. Um, those are the basic tools that you'll be using. Um, what you can do now is, is go ahead and make a little document like I have here by starting going File, New, Document, and just go ahead and select OK for the default setting. And you're going to open up a new page, kind of like I have here, and just play with these tools a little bit. Um, go ahead and try to put uh, some pictures inside of the frames that you put on your page. And uh, something else you can look at once you have these, some of these uh, rectangles on your page here, these containers, is take a look at these two tools. They kind of go hand in hand with these two up here. Uh, this is the gradient tool and the gradient feathering tool. And check it out. Watch. If I select that and I go over here, I'm going to draw a line inside this box. You can see that it's going to create a gradient fill to it. Pretty cool. And we can also do a gradient feather. I'm going to go ahead and do a gradient feather there so we can see what it looks like. Look at that. I had this box selected, so it was actually putting the gradient up there. So that's important. Always go back to select and select the item that you want to change. So I want to change this item. I'm going to put a little... Oh, I selected another box. Look at that. Okay, I'm going to go down here and try that again for the last time. And... Yes, it still isn't working. So let's go ahead and get that fixed here. Because now I really want to demonstrate it. Okay, there we go. Well, notice the top box. It did put my little feather gradient fill on. I'm going to try that again, my gradient feather tool. And you'll notice I don't have my box selected again. So let's do that again. Gradient feather tool. It's important to make sure you have whatever item you're working with selected, as you can see. So I'm going to go ahead and do a gradient feather here. And you'll notice I can make it a little bit transparent and a gradient fill. So there you have it. There's your basic primary tools. Go ahead and open up a new document and play with them and let me know what you think.